What you want for your business, boy? Yeah, what do you want? I want my business to grow. Okay, I hear you there. Everybody wants that. Mm -hmm, me too. I'm making my own way. Yeah, boy, you're blazing a trail, son. And dear God, I hope. Oh, sweet baby Jesus, help. It can be darn hard. My employees show up today. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the road is hard. If it were easy, everybody do it. And cash is tight. It ain't easy to make a dollar. Gotta pinch them pennies sometimes. But I get to listen. Listen to what? Yeah, listen to what? It's a quick talk podcast tonight. I hear that's a good one. Oh, oh, oh now you get me all excited. Oh, oh, me too. Friends, Josh here with another quick talk podcast. I am sitting solo late at night in my office thinking about something that I thought I'd share with you guys that might be a good, useful tip. So I have a podcast, but I also listen to a lot of podcasts as well. I think it's a great way to consume content. Obviously, you think that too, right? And I was listening to one by Michael Hyatt, really famous guy. He's an author, but he used to, I think, be the CEO of like HarperCollins Publishing or something. It's a ginormous company. Really neat guy. And he was interviewing an author of a book called Essentialism. Essentialism. Uh, his last name is McCowan or McEwen or something. But this book, Essentialism, was incredible, at least the way the guy explained it. And the subtitle of the book is The Disciplined Pursuit of Less, which, you know, I'll let that sink in for a second. It's kind of a, it's just kind of a crazy phrase, right? Because we're trained in our life to go after more, 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 wherever your business is, wherever you are in any area of your life, we want to go to the next level, the next level. But what happens is, especially as you start to succeed in any of those areas, is you can get overwhelmed and you're, you can be a victim of your own success. For example, if you are an author and you write a book and no one knows who you are, nor do they care who you are, but your book starts to work. It gets traction, right? You get a book deal, it gets published, it gets, you get some really big media stuff. People go crazy. They love it. It's a bestseller. What happens is you're going to get offers to speak. You're going to get offers to do um, all kinds of stuff, right? People want access to you. And so the disciplined pursuit of less is all about taking our lives and decluttering it and learning how to be really good at saying no. And in your business, you have to learn how to say no as well. Not all opportunities are created equal. And sometimes it's hard for us to turn down a job. Sometimes it's hard for us to pass on an opportunity to bid something because we're kind of subconsciously living in a state of fear that, you know, we can never do that. Like we're not at that level yet. But the catch-22 here is that the way to get the big accounts, the way to get more profit, the way to really go to the next level is by saying no. It's by saying no to the wrong types of opportunities. It's by saying no to the wrong types of people that you hire to work with you. Maybe you've had several years of a small business and you've made some bad hires because you were desperate or in a pinch. Maybe your business is highly seasonal, but now it's starting to work. You're actually getting busy. Well, if you keep doing the same things that you've done to get you to this level of success, you can't get to the next level of success, right? So you have to say no to certain things, which is an indirect way of saying yes to other things. And so I think the phrase, the disciplined pursuit of less is really interesting. So the idea here is to say yes only to the right things, the very, very best things for you right now today. He also had this really cool analogy of this uh, of a lady who's cleaning out her closet, and she's got all these shirts in her closet, and she's a hoarder kind of, right? And we're kind of hoarders with our businesses, with digitally, you know, we have a thousand pictures on our phones, we have, you know, closets full of clothes we don't wear, but we feel like emotionally attached to stuff, even though the intrinsic value of the item maybe isn't that high, maybe it's not worth that much after all. And there's some sort of psychological thing that's been studied, it's a real thing, where we attach a higher value to things that we own than what they're actually worth because we own them. So if something is a $50 item, and but you own it, emotionally you feel like it's a $500 item. That's why you won't get rid of the shirt that you never wear. Um, <laughs> so it, what, it, what I mean in your business is this. We can get cluttered. You can say yes to all these different types of projects, all these different types of services. But as you start to succeed, you need to get better at saying no more often 
to the wrong types of things. Because the idea isn't to fill our lives up with busyness and to fill our lives up with every possible opportunity that comes our way. The idea here is to fill our lives with only the things that matter most. So another really cool thing I heard was Warren Buffett, one of his tips for success is to make a list of the 25 things that you want to do in your life before you die. Then pick the top five of those 25 things. Then never think about the other 20 the rest of your life. <laughs> and if you've never heard that before, you probably didn't see that coming. You can't have it all. One of the biggest modern myths is that if you can fit it all in, you can have it all. And I've been a victim of this. I'm still a victim of this in many, many ways. You cannot have it all. You cannot be the best father in the world and the best husband in the world and an international business person conquering the world and be perfectly physically fit and be, you know, well-read and a philosophy buff and a history buff and be an economics expert and be a, and be a, and be a, and be a, right? You know, there's seasons in our lives. There's times we sacrifice one area to focus on another one. I think that's good. That's healthy. That's normal. But what happens in our modern culture that I see is that we're all busy doing lots and lots and lots of stuff, but only a little bit of a little portion of those things directly apply to what we actually want, to what we actually want with our life. And so we don't do it on purpose. We don't do it on purpose. You didn't mean to get overcommitted to 32 things. Maybe your business feels like it's out of control. You know you need systems. You know you need to have a season in your life where you buckle down, focus and get this crap done, but you literally feel like you can't. And maybe you actually can't because you're the t-ball coach and you volunteer at three different things at your church every week and you're giving of yourself and you're giving of yourself and you're giving, 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 giving to everybody else, to every other opportunity, to every request that's made of you, you honor it. If you have a pickup truck, you're the guy everybody calls to help move their furniture, right? <laughs> and there's nothing wrong with being helpful. That's not my point. My point is is we need to become disciplined, which by definition means pain. We need to become more disciplined at pursuing less. We need to be intentional about not having a closet full of metaphorical clothes that we just don't use, that we don't need, but they're taking up space. Those clothes represent all the stuff in your mind, all the thoughts in your head, all the obligations you have in your personal life, your business life, all that stuff. A lot of those probably don't need to be there. They're probably not providing you a lot of value right now. Or maybe they're not a no, but they're a not yet. Maybe, maybe before you say yes to the next thing that someone offers you, maybe you tell them, oh, that's, thank you so much for thinking of me for that. Um, let me get back with you. Let me check my schedule. Maybe you say that and just instead of just saying yes automatically, because a lot of the guys I work with and girls... We have several females in the boot camp, and I work with a lot of women as well, lots of women entrepreneurs, is that they say they don't have time to work on the systems, to write down, to sit down and create the mind map, to sit down and build a KPI spreadsheet and figure out the numbers and the budget of their business, to figure out what their model is, to figure out what marketing is working best, to, to write the employee systems, to create a training program, or whatever it is, whatever pain points in your business, you're not getting around to those things, probably because you've said yes to all these other things and you just can't find the time. So I just thought that was a cool thought. I thought it might be something you could consider and chew on today. Let me know your thoughts. Send me an email at josh at automategrowcell.com. And if you get any value out of this, leave me a review on iTunes. It helps me tremendously to spread the word to more people. It really, really does. It really does. I appreciate everybody that has left a review. Everybody that hasn't, come on. Come on, quit quit being a freeloader. Quit picking all the nuggets out of these interviews and all the little gold nuggets in my brain that I'm throwing out there to you, which I love to do. And just give me a little itty bitty review. I appreciate all of you very much. Take care. God bless. Hey, thanks for hanging out, friends. And from all of us here at the Quick Talk Podcast team, we hope you love today's show. We hope that you were inspired to become a doer and not just a listener. Apply what you've heard today in your own business and watch things change for the better. Lastly, remember that all the money in the world can't save your soul. Seek first the kingdom of God, my friends. We'll see you next time. For more information about the Quick Talk Podcast or Joshua's other businesses, visit our website, quicktalkpodcast.com. 
have a blessed day.